Brought to you by Hyundai. Experience the all-new Hyundai Santa Fe. Welcome back to the official Lost podcast hosted by ABC.com. And, sad as it is, we're now almost halfway through this first section of Season 3. But fear not, things only get juicier from here. Last week, we saw Sun and Jen rock the boat in their episode, The Glass Ballerina. This week, we'll discover the fates of Locke, Echo, and Desmond after the hatch imploded last season. Further instructions airs Wednesday, October 18th from 9 to 10 p.m. And of course, what would a lost podcast be without executive producers Damon Lindelof and Carlton Cuse? We'll be checking in with those two later. First up, the enigmatic Terry O'Quinn. Last season, the big mystery was the hatch, and what happened if no one pressed the button, which made the moment when Locke smashed the computer strangely satisfying for the briefest of seconds. At least the question would finally be answered. And, as we found out, smashing the computer was also one of the highlights of the season for actor Terry O'Quinn. Smashing that damn computer. (laughs) That was the most fun thing, not pushing the button. I think Locke was pretty frustrated last year. You know, people have asked me about how I compared season one and season two. I don't know if you were going to or not, but season two seemed to me to be one long episode about dealing with the button. And is this now my destiny? This character is saying, like, I was seeking my destiny, and it was in this hatch, and it was all very romantic. And I went down there, and I found it, and like, oh. It's kind of like when I was young, and I remember I was, I was a young Catholic boy, and they were talking about And I thought, I thought, well, if I go to heaven, are there going to be a lot of nuns that are going, like, kneel down, say your prayers, and you're like, you know. So I said, I don't know. Heaven, I'm not sure about. Kind of had the same reaction to the hatch. It's real. It's all bloody real. I pushed the damn button. I know what I saw. It's a lie. It's not real. None of it is real. You don't want to push the button? Then I will. No. Nuns are cool, by the way. I don't know. I was young, and you know, I was, you know, I, I, I was, <laughs> it was, it was harsh. My family, man. I like them. Of course, playing Locke's crisis of faith wasn't all fun and games. It was wrong. It was challenging because he had made such a commitment to it. You know, he had convinced everybody else that this was it. This was it. This was what we had to do, and this was the answer. And then, all of a sudden, he went to the, and found something else that he thought exposed it as fake, and that t- crushed his dreams. And after being the salesman for the hatch, you know, he was kind of like, "No, nope, guess what? Well, I'm just kidding. No, I've changed my mind, or I was wrong," which I think could be written on Locke's tombstone. John Locke, I was wrong. Maybe there'll be some evidence to the contrary this season. On a personal note, I went to Catholic high school, and I can tell you, nuns get a bad rap. I mean, look at me, I'm perfectly normal. Although I do work in television. But so do executive producers Damon Lindelof and Carlton Cuse, who are obviously normal. We now turn it over to them. Hello, Damon. Hi, Carlton. Welcome to another podcast. Are you talking to me? or? No, I'm talking to the um, podcast listeners. Hello, listeners. Hi. Hi, podcast listeners. Shouldn't you be working? Uh, No, clearly not. I wonder how many people listen to this podcast at work, because I really hope they're not listening to it (laughs) when they're not at work, (laughs) when they could be... Actually, doing, something you know, constructive. Something constructive or spending time with friends or watching television. If I was, you know, working in a job where I could listen to it at work, I would listen to it at work. Do you listen to any podcasts other than ours? Uh, no. Do you? I don't listen to ours, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> I watched well, our video podcast and it made me sick. <laughs> you know, but in I, all I the right you're ways. overreacting. Yeah, I, it, okay. was, it, was, it wasn't too bad. No man should ever have to look at himself. That's, that's what I believe. Okay. That's where well. I come from. All right. Well, anyway, <laughs> hi. Uh, why We're going to we talk about. Why don't we start with a rehash of the glass ballerina, Excellent. which a lot of people don't know was Carlton's nickname in third grade. 
Um, it was fifth grade. It was. I'm sorry, which is another story entirely. It is. But this is Sun and Jin's story, and with, there was an interesting re, re, uh, revelation uh, in this episode, Carlton, and that we see that the question that was being asked last year, for those of you who say we never answer any questions, lo and behold, Sun sure enough was having an affair with this young man, Jay Lee. But in reality, we really didn't answer any questions because. We still have the big question looming there, which is, whose baby is it? Well, yeah, I, I, that is a big question. But what's cool is Sun might not know the answer to that question. And, exactly. And, and this is a cool thing to talk about on a podcast because we kind of... Pregnancy? Knew, yeah, pregnancy. Well, it's Carlton, okay. there's something you should know. Um, I, we knew that you know when we shot um, Sun and Jin's last flashback story in season two that, yes, Sun ha- w- was going to consummate this affair with Jay Lee, and we had a conversation with Yunjin about it. She asked us, and she said she'd like to play it as if they had, and we said, you wouldn't be playing it wrong. And it's very cool to sort of now go back and look at that episode knowing, you know, what she did do and watching her performance and really sort of appreciating the nuance of it. I think, again, last week, both her and Daniel um, were just were extraordinary. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and big props to them. They're so good. They're so good. So, yeah, so, you know, obviously that's very much in play this season, and we'll get back to this story, and we will find out whose baby it is. Are you inferring that Sun is going to find out whose baby it yes, is? Yes, I how, am. How is, how is someone, how's she going to do that? Well, you know, that's going to, that's, you, that's a good story, isn't it? How do you it? take a out. paternity test on the island? It's interesting. Very interesting. See you, you, you see you're you taking in, one right now, Yeah, I'll you? see you in episode 19, somewhere around about. Um, um, so... Let's talk about the implications of what happened on the boat. Yeah, let's talk about it. Sun shot somebody. Big episode for Sun all the way around. Yeah, she shot this woman whose name appears to be uh, Colleen or something Call. like that. Is that what they, what, whatever they call her in the beginning? We'll find out more about her yes, later. Really. But um, yes, this sort of rather severe blonde woman. Who issued a rather stern warning before that, too, didn't she? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but before she left to get the boat, she actually kind of got a kiss on the cheek from that guy who's Pickett. been beating on Sawyer. Yeah. So what's going on Danny there? Danny Pickett. I think uh, they were an item. So he's probably not going to be very happy about no. her getting shot. No. So she's dead, though, right? I don't know. We don't know what, we don't know what happened. She got shot. I mean, I guess we'll have do you to, think she's dead? I, I guess I'll have to watch the show this week. Yeah, we'll I have normally, to find out what happens. I normally watch Criminal Minds, but this week... <laughs> this week you might watch Lost? I will. Awesome. That's um, great. More importantly, though, because all yeah. that's very important stuff, but Sawyer totally laid it on Kate. He made a big kiss on her, and yeah, lo and behold, afterwards, it sort of seemed like he was just doing it so he could a- ascertain certain information about the, his guards, but I think that he was just trying to get some. <laughs> That's my theory. I think that's a good Correct theory. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, you're wrong. All right. <laughs> no, you're not wrong. I mean, I think uh, I think things are looking good for Kate and Sawyer. I mean, if I was a betting man, I would say that uh, you know, on the, the you know, didn't wasn't there a promise made that we would find out whether Kate was going to hook up with Sawyer or Kate or Jack? I don't know. Or about, herself? I don't know about promises, Carlton. But if you're a betting man, I will bet you five dollars that she chooses Jack. Okay. Put her there. You're on. All right. We my just money's shook. my money's on Jack. Okay, my money uh, is on. Speaking of Jack, Kate having an affair with herself. What? <laughs> that's interesting. I mean, she, sp- speaking of, uh, she could just choose them both. Like that's what they did on Grey's Anatomy. And then what like, happens? Do we each get two fifty? Yeah. Well, okay. yes, exactly. You, right. you lose two fifty, and I win two fifty. So, uh, speaking of Jack, there was a bit of a an interesting scene at the end of last week's episode, uh, in which uh, Ben. Uh, who introduces himself as Benjamin Linus, I guess right. he says. He says he's lived on the island all his life, which is interesting if you believe him. I mean, we would consider that fairly revelatory for those of you who feel like we never give you answers. But correct me if I'm wrong again, Carlton, but the Dharma Initiative we know came to the island in around 1980 if we look at their orientation film. So right. he seems like he's a little bit older than that. So if he's been on the island all his life, then... It might imply that there were other people on the island before the Dharma Initiative. Interesting. Interesting. That's really interesting. Well, I mean, we know that there were people who crashed there in Rousseau's party. We know that there were, although they were sort of kind of simultaneous with the Dharma Initiative. And then there was also, of course, the people who crashed in the Black Rock. Wow, yeah. The people that made that crazy statue with four toes. 
Wow, yeah, you're right. So, you know... It boggles the mind. There could be all sorts of people that have been on this island over long periods of time. It's interesting. What does that do to everybody's theories about the island, Damon? I think it's time to go back and reevaluate your yes. theories, as, as you always do on Lost. Or you could just eat a sandwich, whichever, <laughs> whichever is more interesting to you. Exactly. Uh, but we... And also in this scene, Ben shows Jack this videotape of the Boston Red Sox... Uh, winning the World Series, which is a gag that we that has been running over the course of three seasons now. Some of our favorite scenes on the show focus on Jack's incredulity that the the Red, Red Sox. Sox will ever win the World Series, which we thought was great because right when we did the pilot of the show, which we shot in like February of 2004, the Red Sox won the World Series in October of 2004, and we were already shooting probably the fourth or fifth episode of season one at that point. But obviously no one on the island knew that it had happened. So we built this great sort of emotional thing between Jack and his dad about the likelihood of the Boston Red Sox winning the World Series. And of course, none of, nobody on the island knowing that they had. And the payoff now finally comes here in our ca- calendar year, 2000. Uh, where are we? In 2006 now? 2006 now. Yeah, yes, it's very yeah. exciting. So, but for them, as, as Ben reminds Jack, they've only it's, it's only around Thanksgiving of 2004 still. So... They've got this videotape, and that opens up all sorts of doors. Like, I how do the others get this broadcast? The thing, that, and then, of course, it really opens up the doors for the shattering revelation that Jack Shepard is actually an ice hockey fan. That yeah, is shattering. Um, but I'm a Red Sox fan, so it's the greatest thing ever that we have the Red Sox at the uh, end of this episode. That's a great scene. I mean, uh, both uh, Matthew Fox and uh, Michael Emerson are just incredibly good in that scene. I think it's one of my favorite scenes we've ever done. Excellent. Well, good. Excuse me, I was burping. (laughs) Um, Obviously, it moved you uh, deeply. Moved something in my esophagus, that's for sure. It's time for our prehash of further instructions. Um, Carlton, I I do have one criticism of the show so far this year. Yeah. And that criticism is we've now spent two weeks with these new characters that we don't know much about and all this other's business. What happened to Desmond and Echo and Locke, you know, you know, following the turning of the failsafe key. I mean, come Damon, on. Damon, that's a really good question, and I think that it's a well-timed question because this episode will finally give you the answers to those questions. So, but you're just going to do a thing where it's like, oh, they're all okay, and, you know, we're not going to explain to you what happened. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, I, mean, I just don't want to get the, my expectations it was kind of up. The, we kind of broke the story along the path of least resistance uh, axis. Interesting. So whose flashback story is, is this? Uh, this would be Locke's flashback oh, story. Oh, good. So you're going to tell yeah. us how he got in that wheelchair then? No. No? No, no, no. Oh, no. great. Fantastic. Not, not this week. Wonderful. But we do oh. we do see a return of Locke as the man of the jungle, which oh. I think is something the audience will be very happy to see. Wasn't that your nickname in sixth grade, <laughs> man of the jungle? It was after your it last was. ballerina was phase? Once, well, I, I turned a corner. I turned a demonstrable corner between fifth and sixth grade, and man of the jungle... Kind of remains my nickname to this yeah, day. Yeah, that's more indicative of the of the man that I met. It's the, the glass ballerina. I've seen photographs, but it's exactly. hard to believe that was you in that tutu. Yeah. And you're so fragile. Yeah. And beautiful, well, really. Well, thank you. I, I, I really appreciate it. All right. That. So it's well, going to be a good episode. Before we get carried away, it's time for fan questions. questions. Okay. Can I go first? I wish you would. This question is uh, under the heading, Shannon, will we see more of her? Posted by Pam Stein 4, hmm. who's posted four times in the last 90 days. I love your podcast, by the way. Damon, you are so super cute. Carlton, just read, the, want, just read the question. I don't, need, I don't need your editorializing. <laughs> Why should I read the question since you wrote it? Oh, that's good. I, too, am from the Great Garden State. Uh, okay. That would be New Jersey. Thank you, Pam Stein, for... That's awesome. Anyway, one of the things that really did frustrate me about the show was when you killed both Boone and Shannon. Hmm. Actually, it says when you killed of both Boone and Shannon. I think so. that's a typo. Okay. I'll, uh, I Anybody who thinks I'm super chalk, cute is obviously I won't chalk it up to a highly disturbed New Jersey already, educational yes. experience that was less than stellar. Zowie. Um, anyone else who died can be seen possibly in other castaways' flashbacks, i.e. Libby and Christian. There is a rumor that Ian Summerhalter will be in the next Locke-centric episode. Are we ever going to see more of Shannon? She was so one-dimensional through most of the first season... 
but you killed her once she got interesting. I mean, so does she like her or not? It's like one dimensional. So anyway, killing her uh, off, kill, you know, kills. Anyway, killing her kills off more chances to see Boone. Wow. Wow, that is. That I'm not was, really sure what the question is in there. The I, question. Well, first of all, can you confirm that we'll be seeing Ian Summerhalter on the show? And well, if it's a lock centric flashback story, which we've already determined is that's this week's episode, I guess you won't have to wait long to find out. But that'd be exciting to see Boone again. Yeah, it would be. Um, and uh, are we gonna ever see more of Shannon? Uh, we um, we will probably be seeing more of Shannon, yes, in flashbacks, you know, again, until the zombie season rolls around. Yeah, then she can be right back on the island. Yeah. It'll be then awesome. You think one dimension is <laughs> is bad. Wait wait until you see the zombie dimension. Which zombie is dimension makes one dimension look like a frickin' Bergman film. Which brings me to my question, Carlton, yes. which is subject heading Raise the Dead by Banana Lucia. Awesome. Uh, one post in the last 90 days. What up? I got a twofer for you. Can we expect any of the dead losties or others to come back to life through the magic of the island or through the technology of the others? You know, we kind of, um, with the proviso that we will be doing the zombie season, have made a commitment to not bring back dead characters as dead characters. So, like, if you're dead on the island and lost, you're you're pretty much dead. Unless it's in a flashback. Unless it's in a flashback. Like Ethan, who, like, died in episode, you know... 11 of season one and yet has made five guest appearances or, since or christian shepherd i mean oh yeah i mean my god he was Dead he was in a the coffin show before even the show, show started and he's had you know more screen time than uh some of our regulars excellent so the the two for the the part two now yeah. is obviously when a plane crashes people look for it and the survivors any insight as to the progress of the people searching for the missing plane in the real world How's that going? Uh, not well. I mean, it's now 2006, and, well, has anybody found the plane? I mean, Well, no. it's not 2006, 2006. for it's them. It's 2004 for them. So they've only been looking for two months. Yeah. Well, or have they? Or have they? What is... Wait. We don't really know what time it is in the outside world, do we? Well, Ben told us that it's, it's, it's November of 2004, 2004. but... Okay. I wouldn't trust those others if yeah. I were you, Banana Lucia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they haven't found the plane. Uh, Damon. Yes. This is from a lost gangster from Bushama. This is going to be good. 38 one. posts in the last 90 days. Wow. Will we see a gangsta on the island? All right. Someone like Easy E who can nice. rap and who is black and who is from Compton, California. Interesting. I think that would bring great diversity to the show. It sure, it sure would. That's the, that, um, I, I think that, uh, well, first off, Easy e is, as we call in the casting trade, technically unavailable, as he is dead. Um, so, until season seven, the aforementioned zombie season, Easy will not be uh, making any appearances. But I, Can I, we cast an Easy e lookalike? I guess we could. Yeah. But uh, I like the idea of a rapper on Lost, and uh, maybe one of them, maybe the others have a sort of resident rapper you know, Ben, like, he lives next door to Ben, and he has turntables, and he, Ben comes out and says, Keep it down in there, or I'll kidnap your children! Or something like that. That's awesome. You like that idea? I do. I think we should, we should immediately go Someone into the room and break that story. All right. That's I, fantastic. Carlton, I have yes. a question for you. Jack's Tattoo and Flame Station by Am I Lost. Three posts in the last 90 days. Carlton... I always thought that the tattoo on the underside of the left forearm of Jack is a flame with sparkles. And if so, then does this relate to the flame station on the doormat? And sparkles was actually Carlton's <laughs> nickname in college. Uh, a brief period away from Man in the Jungle. You know, I, I really then, actually don't think all these biographical details are of general interest to the podcast listeners. I beg to differ, but we'll, we'll, let, we'll let them respond next week. You can vote for Carlton's, your favorite, favorite nickname. nickname. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, but anyway, you know, the question is, Jack's time. tattoo, seriously. Are we going to ever find out what it's all about? Well, sweet Pete, let me tell you. <laughs> wow, um, that... I like that nickname. The uh, yes, the, you know, I will say my loss that there is a you're you're very sort of perceptive in your in your question here. I think we will um, learn a lot more about both Jack's tattoos and the flame station in upcoming episodes. Those are uh, so you know as to whether they're linked. You'll have to just watch and uh, stay tuned. Are you saying tuned. that we're going to find the flame station at some point in season three? Um, I think that'd be a pretty fair assessment. 
And people say we don't give anything away exactly. in this podcast. You will find, we will find the Flame Station, Season 3. That's lost. phenomenal. Damon? Yeah? I shall keep this short and sweet as my question is a twofer. I think I just asked you that one. <laughs> no, but, it's not. Right. This is a separate twofer. Okay. From Spamalot. Great. This person has posted 93 times. Wow. wow. Okay. 222. Okay. Two, two. Spamalot 222. Two, two. Thank you, Spamalot. Benry and the others keep referring to some dreaded him. Is Benry him now, or is there someone still higher up on the chain of command? That's number one. I like that. I like the Benry thing. That's yeah. very clever. It's sort of like a, you know, like a J-Lo, you know, like a Benifer and Brad Bragellino. Well, what's cool is the PS on this is I am neither a Jader nor a Skater. I am a Damon slash Carlton Shipper, a Damelton. Damelton. Damelton? How about Carl Dam? That's better, I think. I like that. I went to Carl Dam once and was bored. <laughs> the answer to that question is, are, uh, we're certainly assuming that when, when Ben refer, went, went back when he was Henry, he says, you know, the man in charge on the other side of the island is a great man, but he's not a forgiving man, that he's talking about himself um, when you later realize he seems to be the ones calling the shots. But, you know, I don't know. There's a, you know, lo- you don't always see what you get on the show. So. That's right. But I think you're, you know, you're not, in I think other words, it's you're very not fair. closing that door. Yeah, I'm not going to close it. Okay. Leave it open. A crack. crack. Yeah. Awesome. As we, Jew, as we of the Jewish faith say, we'll leave it open for Elijah. Awesome. That's fantastic. Did you ever see that? Remember that horror movie, Elijah? Did yes, it was, was a short that, film. That was fantastic. Um, Damon, uh, part two. Yes. Uh, Kevin, Kelvin and Desmond both asked their new hatchmates, are you him? Are we ever going to find out why and who this him is and why he never showed up? Thanks. Well... I think the short answer is him is the, the, their alleged replacement right. that uh, the candle refers to the uh, in the int- orientation film. And quite honestly, I think it's fairly sexist that they assume that their replacement would be a guy. But, you know, I don't know if they're referring to someone specific or anything else, but he might just have gotten lost along the way or stopped to tie his shoe and gotten eaten by a polar bear or something like that. Or the Dharma Initiative might have been over and there might not have been any more replacements to send. And he was sitting down there waiting for replacements and yet uh you know the dharma dharma initiative might have gone chapter 11 that is a much better theory than my chew tying polar bear eating theory so um, i'll go with that and i have one more question okay. for you carlton please give charlie and claire a good story of this line by l k b a c b um i couldn't even begin to try to pronounce that so uh, Charlie and Claire were both relegated to background characters last season, and we diehard CC fans were frustrated a lot. Those are your initials, too, by the way, CC. Yeah, well, thank I'm you, a, Dominic Monaghan. I'm for a your CC question. fan. Yeah, exactly. Could we please have a solid story and more screen time for them? Uh, What's going on with Charlie and Claire? Well, they kissed? What's going to happen? They kissed, and there is sort of is a budding romance, but. Um, you know, that's a good question, and I think there's some interesting twists and turns coming up in that romantic relationship. I, I think it might be fair to say that uh, that might go from a, a romantic relationship to a famous lost triangle. Would that, be, would that be possible, Damon? But there's three sides to a triangle, and if Charlie's one and Claire's one, who's the third side? Hmm. Who would that be? Who would that be? That's a good question. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. If we ever get back to the frickin' beach, we could find out. Well, what's going to happen this week? That's good. And okay. further instructions. All right. See so how maybe, we tie that up? Maybe there'll be some nice clues there. I hope to answer so. that question. Not some Ms. Clues, <laughs> but some actual nice clues. Because she's exactly. mean and scary. She's, yes, she is indeed. All righty, well. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we've enjoyed it. I hope you have. It's better than counting sheep <laughs> if you want to go to bed at night to listen to this podcast. It's very, these, very exciting. Awesome. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. That about wraps up this podcast. Remember, submit your own fan questions at abc.com, where you can also stream last week's episode. Further instructions are Wednesday, October 18th from 9 to 10 p.m., only on ABC. You're hearing the sound of America's most advanced assembly plant. But Honda and Toyota are only hearing footsteps. Because right here, Hyundai is building a better SUV. The all-new, feature-packed Santa Fe. The standard safety features like electronic stability control and six airbags. And the protection of America's best warranty. Ten years, 100,000 miles. All for thousands less. The all-new, fuel-efficient Santa Fe. Only at Hyundai. See dealer for limited warranty details. Safety belt should always be worn.